ratified by authority of the SCP Foundation Overseer Council. The document and all associated documents are the property of the SCP Foundation and are subject to the classification requirements and restrictions therein. This document may or may not contain lethal memetic defense measures. Attempting to access or disseminate this document without proper and sufficient authorization is punishable by death. Item number SCP-6421 Security Level 3 Containment Class Chesset Disruption Class Amida Risk Class Warning Assigned Site Professional Site 820 Site Director Director Tiada Radiate Research Head Dr. Luis Velasquez Assigned Task Force MTF Prolight 23 As Below As Above Special Containment Procedures Note Chesset Containment and Control of the Anomaly greatly affect the internal affairs of the organization related to the item. The anomaly is now co-contained by the Foundation and associated organizations. At this time, proper and complete containment of SCP-6421 has been restricted due to the Breakneck Agreement. Originally devised by the Tulane Presidential Government, the Global Co Coalition, and the SCP Foundation. According to the guidelines of the agreement, any individuals who are not currently affected with scp 6421 a cognito hazard wanting to enter the borders of Chile are to undergo a Class Three memetic inoculation procedure, disguised as a newly implemented cognitive behavioral test examination. Operative agents of MTF Twilight 23 are to patrol areas and or locations that possess a high probability of an instance of SCP 6421A appearing. Each operative is to be equipped with a standard issue scramble goggles. Note scramble goggles, originally developed by Dr. Daniel Alexi, are devices used by the Foundation that is capable of filtering out mimetic and or cognito hazards from the perception of the viewer. However, prolonged use of the scrambled goggles will result in it slowly malfunctioning. To mitigate SCP-6421-A's effect, if an instance is ever discovered, it is to be immediately taken down and incinerated. As per the GOC's stipulation of the agreement, if at any moment heck the number of human subjects affected by SCP 6421A's cognito hazard reaches over the current population of Chile, presently 17,574,003 individuals. Note, this number will update accordingly with the current birth rate and death rate of the human population of Chile by the Foundation Department of Analytics. Or, if the SCP-6421 phenomenon has started to occur in countries other than Chile, all associated parties are to properly carry out Protocol 8469, Green Octavius. See Addendum 6421-5 for more information. Description SCP-6421 is a designation given to an anomalous phenomenon that initially started in the year 2017, affecting multiple types of billboards and posters that are primarily or currently located in Chile. These affected billboards and posters, designated as SCP-6421-A instances, usually depict a photo or an artwork of the fictional Marvel Comics character Spider-Man, as being the current president of the Republic of Chile. Instances of SCP-6421-A contains a cognito hazardous property where any human subjects directly fearing them will come to believe that Spider-Man is the current president of the Republic of Chile and will usually ignore all pronouncements or evidence that states otherwise. Class A amnestics have been proven to be effective in mitigating SCP-6421-A's effect However, large doses of amnestics are needed to properly accomplish this. Thus, the likelihood of subjects experiencing painful migraines, cerebral hemorrhaging, and permanent brain damage is dangerously high. 
Subjects affected with SCP-421-A's cognito hazard for a long period of time, usually from three to four days, have been noted to experience a drastic behavioral change. Prolonged observation of these subjects has revealed that the behavior change includes being more involved in ceremonies and or events that are meant to improve patriotism among residents in Chile. Having increased fascination in state and governmental affairs revolving around Chile, becoming unusually more compliant with any law, bylaw, or state ordinance passed by any government body within Chile. It is estimated that over 2.3% of the global population is affected by SCP-6421-A's cognito hazard. Addendum 6421-1 Experiment Law Experiment 6421-1 Date 3rd of December 2018 Presiding Dr. Luis Vazesquez and Junior Researcher Marcelo Pereira Intend to further study and research SCP-6421-A's effect on human subjects that fit within a certain and given criterion, and to also hopefully discover a limit to SCP-6421-A's effect. Procedure An instance of SCP-6421-A was exposed to an individual, D-2844, who has a basic knowledge of Marvel's Spider-Man and Country Chile. Observations. As expected, D-2844 presently believes the fact that Spider-Man is a current president of Chile. Conclusion. Not applicable. Experiment 64212. Date. 3rd of December, 2018. Presiding, Dr. Luis Velasquez and junior researcher Marcelo Pereira. Intent to further study and research scp 6421 as effect on human subjects that fit within a certain and given criterion, and to also hopefully discover a limit to scp 6421 as effect. Procedure An instance of scp 6421 a was exposed to an individual, D-7277, who has no prior knowledge of the country Chile, but has a basic understanding of Marvel Spider-Man. Observations D-7277 presently believes that Spider-Man is the current president of a small country located somewhere in South America. Analysis When D-7277 was given a map of South America and was asked to show the current location of where he thinks the country that was previously mentioned is located, he failed to do so. Conclusions SCP-6421-A seems to only affect the perception of absurdity of the subjects, but doesn't seem to be capable of altering the subject's current knowledge of the absurdity. Update. See next experiment. Experiment 6421-3. Date. 4th of December, 2018. Presiding, Dr. Luis C. and Gina Researcher Marcelo Pereira. Intend. To further study and research scp 6421 as effect on human subjects that fit within a certain and given criterion, and to also hopefully discover a limit to scp 6421 as effect. Procedure An instance of scp 6421 a was exposed to an individual, D-5887, who has no prior knowledge of the Marvel franchise, but possess basic knowledge of the country Chile. Observation. Despite the subject's lack of knowledge, D-5887 presently believes that Spider-Man is the current president of Chile. When D-5887 was asked to describe Spider-Man, he was capable of giving a basic description and a classic backstory of Spider-Man. Analysis. When D-5887 was asked to name other fictional characters from the Marvel franchise, he failed to do so. Conclusions SCP-6421-A seems to be capable of altering the current knowledge of Spider-Man of a subject. This seems to directly contradict the previous experiment. Experiment 6421 Date 4th of December 2018 Free sighting Dr. Luis Valesquez and junior researcher Marcelo Pereira. 
intent to further study and research SCP-2421 its effect on human subjects that fit within a certain and given criterion, and to also hopefully discover a limit to scp 421 as effect. Procedure An instance of scp 421 a was exposed to an individual, D4837, who has no prior knowledge of neither the Marvel franchise nor the country Chile. Observations Despite the subject's lack of knowledge, D4837 presently believes that Spider-Man is the current president of a small country located somewhere in South America. Conclusions This experiment seems to show that scp 6421 a is capable of altering the subject's current knowledge of Spider-Man, but can't seem to affect the subject's knowledge of the country Chile. Addendum 6421-2 Interview Log the following is an interview conducted to properly study and research the mindset of a human subject affected by scp 6421s cognito hazard. Interviewed Lamido Beltram, a human adult male currently living in San Diego, Chile. Interviewer Dr. Luis Velasquez. Forward This interview has been translated from Spanish. Begin log. All right, we can officially begin. My name is Dr. Luisis Velasquez, and I'm here with our subject, Romero Beltram. I thank you for agreeing to volunteer for this interview, Mr. Beltram. Oh, it's fine. Always happy to help. So, we're just going to ask you some questions, and you may answer to the best of your abilities. All right. Great. So, the first question do you believe the fact that Spider-Man is the current president of your country? Um, yeah, obviously. Everybody knows that. As in Spider-Man from Marvel Comics? Yes, that's Spider-Man. Are you sure? Positive, yeah. Can you believe that a fictional superhero character created by a comics company for entertainment is right now running your country? Well, you don't have to make it sound stupid. What do you mean by stupid? The only reason why it sounds stupid is how you can actually believe such an absurd concept. Hey, just because both of us have different political views is not an excuse for you to be rude, alright? Different political views? What are you on about? Spider-Man is not real, he's fictional! Fictionality doesn't have anything to do with real world politics. It's all about bravery, commitment, and a true sense of justice. Whether it's fiction or not is something we, the citizens, can look over because it's not important. Okay, so you're saying fictionality is irrelevant. So it's entirely possible for, say, Darth Vader to be publicly elected by the people as the President of the United States of America. Of course not, Darth Vader's not real. And besides, who in the right mind would vote for him in the first place? You're a son of a... And no. Closing statement, other interviews conducted with different individuals affected with scp 6421 as cognito hazard has yielded somewhat similar results with the preceding interview. Addendum 6421-3 Discovery On the 4th of May 2017, Foundation agent Fiona Torres was visiting her mother and little sister in Santiago, Chile during her two-week work vacation. Before this, Agent Torres' mother and sister has both been affected with an instance of scp 6421 a unbeknownst to Agent Torres. Agent Torres noticed that her sister was drawing a picture depicting Spider-Man wearing a suit with the words Presidente de Chile, captioned below the drawing. When Agent Torres asked what the significance of the drawing was, her sister looked at her with confusion. Agent Torres then asked her mother regarding the circumstance, but she was also confused with Agent Torres' question, as per the Foundation Agent Regulation 274H. Section H274 of the Foundation Agent Regulation, all personnel are to contact the nearest Foundation site if they were ever to experience an anomalous and or paranormal event 
or occurrence. Agent Torres immediately reported her situation to personnel from Professional Site 820, with two Foundation field agents being sent in to investigate. Agents in question, field analyst at Ken Crispo and Marcos Rana, reported that they first interviewed multiple individuals living closely with Agent Torres' mother, with almost all of them showing the same perception of Spider-Man being the president of Chile. They first reported that the possible anomaly might be a mimetic absurdity perceptive contagion. The agents then contacted multiple highly trained Foundation memeticists to investigate the situation further. On the 26th of May, 2017, multiple Foundation personnel were reported to be affected with the memetic contagion. After this was known, memetic quarantine site HF645 was immediately erected 10 kilometers from the city of Santiago, Chile. During this, the Overseer Council has classified the current situation as a stage 3 threat to normalcy. Multiple neutralization efforts were underway. The Global Co Coalition somehow became aware of the situation in Chile and attempted to aid Foundation personnel in successfully neutralizing the anomaly, with them offering a large number of their paratechnological equipment to the Foundation. However, the actual current president of Chile, Michel Bachelet, halted all of the Foundation and the GOC's operations. When President Bachelet was informed of the medical anomaly affecting multiple residents of Santiago and the importance of the neutralization efforts, she arranged a formal discussion with Director John Kyle Actis, Foundation Head of the Department of External Affairs, and General Constantine Mohausen, GOC External Operations Chief. The results of the discussion can be seen in Addendum 6421-4. Addendum 6421-4 Discussion Law The following is a transcript of a discussion initially conducted by President Michel Fajolet with Foundation Director Actis and Coalition General Mohausen present. This session was held within President Fajolet's private presidential office. Begin Law Okay for us to record this session, Mrs. President, for record keeping reasons. Sure, of course. Only as you boys can be reminded to teach yourselves a lesson or two on some manners. Like asking for some direct permission from someone before you go trying to quarantine the capital state. Sorry for not informing you earlier, Mrs. President, but it was a sudden decision. Yes, I already read some of your reports on the situation. Something about the memetic absurdity perceptive contagion? That's what our friends from Site 43 can deduce for now. Basically, the contagion somehow alters the human perception of thought and introduces to them certain absurd concepts that will somehow make an individual accept it as normal baseline reality. Here's also evidence of a progressive behavioral change, and we're still looking into that. This contagion has affected a large number of residents of Santiago, and verified reports have revealed that other individuals from multiple other major cities in Chile are also affected. Huh, I guess that means it works. Uh, ma'am, what do you mean it works? Do you have other information you're not telling us regarding the anomaly? Of course I do. I'm the one that technically created the anomaly. You created the anomaly. I technically created the anomaly. Emphasis on technically. W where? When? How? Why? Well, slow down, dear. I made an anomaly, not time travel. Mrs. President, have you maybe created this anomaly by purpose or by accident. Is it possible that you were under the influence of another individual? I assure you, General, I was of sound mind and body when the anomaly was created. But, but why? It doesn't make sense. Let me ask you, gentlemen, a question. When is the last time you've heard someone truthfully and honestly say that they would die for their own country? 
that they would sacrifice everything, their friends, their family, for the good of their country. Exactly! No one cares about that anymore. Now people only do it because we said they have to do it. They're not doing it voluntarily or willingly anymore. Liberty and autonomy are completely lackluster. To everyone on this goddamn planet, patriotism is dead. But I've decided that my country will not be that way. A whole new path has shown and presented me the true road towards true freedom and liberation. I have promised myself that Chile will not fall prey to the treachery that is unwillingness. How did you manage to achieve that? Did you have help? I very much did. I contacted a very old friend of mine from London, some fellow named Penrose. I saved his business from some legal trouble a while back in 2007. So he owes me big time. Anyway, I enlisted his help and told him of my predicament. He contacted another acquaintance of his, whom I can't remember the name of at the moment. I think it was some fellow who was named after a planet or something. Anyway, he was more of an expert in these kinds of things. They explained that the only way for it to probably work is that the people need to believe in something else, something completely different, something that isn't real, something entirely fictional. And you chose Spider-Man. Why? Why not? He's a great example of a great and true leader. He has the bravery to risk his life for other people, the commitment of not stopping to save lives because of his own misfortunes, and a true sense of justice in fighting crime. He is the equivalent of how a leader should probably act. Sure, he has clashed with hardships over the years of his life. Girlfriends die, family members killed, and yet he's still keeping on believing that the world could be better. Huh, I see. But, Mrs. President, what would happen to your position within the UN Council? It would certainly cause some political disputes and problems. You can't represent yourself and the Republic of Chile as a fictional character. Don't forget, General, I am still the actual President of Chile. I shall represent myself as normal and through standard protocol. Of course. I should bring this new discovery to the proper psych division. I suppose I too shall bring this to the overseers and probably see what they say. I must admit this situation is very different and complicated even for the Foundation. I'm sure the old fives in the 108 can understand. Well, thank you, Mrs. President, for publicly arranging this discussion on behalf of both of our organizations. I shall now take my leave. Although, I do have one more question, Mrs. President. How did you spread this anomaly? Did you have a patient zero? Are you the patient zero? <laughs> you still think this is a mimetic contagion? Uh, have you noticed any difference with the billboards, Director? Oh, and no. Following this discussion, SCP-6421 was publicly discovered and a breakneck agreement was quickly devised under the recommended guidelines of President Pachelet, Director Actis, and General Mohausen. The agreement was then proposed to the GOC Council of 108, which was subsequently approved. It was then similarly proposed to the entirety of the Overseer Council, with the result seen below. All five council proposed so summary. Proposal approve all of the proper guidelines, regulations, requirements, specifications, stipulations, and parameters proposed within the breakneck agreement to hopefully mitigate SCP C421's threat to normalcy. Director Actus. Council vote summary. Yay. Three, four, five, six, seven. 9, 10, 11, nay, 8, 12, abstain, 1, 2, 13, status approved. Notes, 
some of the agreement's guidelines has been edited and publicly updated according to incorporate Protocol 8469 Green Octavius. Addendum 64215 Protocol 8469 Green Octavius Location Professional Site 820 Date 22nd of August 2017 Individuals Present Foundation Director John I. Actus and GOC General Constantine Mohausen. Begin log. It's been a long time since I've been in an actual Foundation site. A lot of things has changed, though. Too bad I wasn't there to see this organization grow. Yeah, and whose fault is that, I wonder? Don't ruin this for me, John. Jesus, I still can't believe that they actually gave you a freaking job in the goddamn coalition, even after what you did to those villagers in Portugal, you ruthless, merciless son of a bitch. If the committee existed back then, your ass would be full of lead. I'm a changed man now, John. I'm different from before. Cut the bull crab, Are you going to tell me why you wanted me to arrange this whole discussion in the first place? I wanted to talk about the current protocols for SCP-6421. You and I both know that the creation of the agreement is not enough to limit the anomaly in itself. Someday, one way or another, it will affect other countries, and then we'll have a bigger problem on our hands. So, do you have a plan of some sort? I do, in fact. General Mohausen reaches into his coat and produces a file for the documentation and hands it to Director Actus. Director Actus receives it and slowly opens before reading it thoroughly. You're planning on making an... And I mean? Yes, unfortunately the GOC doesn't have the proper resources to create an effective anti me But I'm sure Leela from the anti medics Division is very much capable. The Foundation has an anti medics division? The anti meme would feature an anti needle hazard that would cause any perceiver to forget the entire existence of Spider-Man from the Marvel franchise. In case of a breach from SCP-6421, we will deploy the anti meme to every government, news organization, and anonymous agency on the planet. Once the job is finished, the anti meme would be installed to itself a mnemonic self-eradication perceptor, so it would destroy itself, so only the only people who would remember Spider-Man are only the council and the overseers. Okay, if that is achievable, what about the movies, the games, the merchandises? The entire meme will take care of that, I'm sure. You already thought about this through, haven't you? I always do, John. <clears throat> I do notice that you haven't given this a name yet. Yeah, I'm still thinking about that. Well, since this is an attempt to finally and completely destroy Spider-Man, what about Green Octavius? <laughs> nice. And no. As of the 2nd of September 2017, the end-time medic proposed by General Mohausen was successfully created by the Foundation anti medics Division. It is currently stored within a secured and encrypted file server located in Professional Site 820 that can only be accessed by the GOC Council of 108 and the Overseer Council. <laughs>